What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update exclusively for pro members. Today's Friday, December 13th. Let's jump into the community, get started, talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to our friend Wes Y. Wes shared a uh, little scan that he set up in TOS to do some uh, efficiency in his duck hunting. And so if you haven't seen that, go to the community. I posted it here in this uh, thread as well. So thank you, Wes. Good stuff. Uh, and any kind of little trade hack. I mean, we are trade hackers after all. Any kind of little trade hack like that is always helpful. So thank you. Congrats, Wes. You got caught being hot. Let's go to the, uh, to the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 9th. Let's get down here. Had quite a few alerts this week, actually, uh, in comparison. So first trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we got down to under 21 days. We were at 17 days to expiration on our short strangle. So we wanted to roll that out. We kept the strikes exactly the same. We still have that inverted short strangle. And so we just rolled that out to the next cycle. So here it is. Uh, price is hanging out right here. Now, if price were to continue lower, we were going to add to this, but price has moved up this week. And so we're just holding for now. We may still add to this, uh, but for now, we just have the one set of short strangles in Natty Gas. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in forward slash ZW, which is wheat. So we closed one set of our iron condors, booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And we've got a, another piece still on here. Let me check that out. Uh, you can see price is hanging out right here in the middle. So nothing to do there except for wait. Next trade was an opening trade in SPX. So we put on a new iron duck with 21 days to expiration. And so let's take a look at that. Uh, we had another one on. We actually, there's the closing bell. Uh, we had another one on, uh, or we have another one on, excuse me, that we put on today. But uh, the one that we put on earlier this week is this one here. You can see price has run up the duck beak uh, with this market continuing higher. Uh, if we put this on the expiration date, which is 1231. Uh, if we move our price slice here to the edge of our beak, you can see we still have a, about a 30% chance that price could come back into that max profit area. So. Not looking to take that off yet. However, if price does continue higher into early next week, we might see a chance where we take this off early. But, uh, but for now, we are holding. And then the other one we put on today, I'll kind of skip ahead to this alert. Uh, we put this on with just seven days to expiration. So it actually has less uh, than the, the, the other one that we had. So price is hanging out right here. Uh, price came down a little bit since we put this on, uh, so still in good shape there, but that expires next Friday. So we've got one that expires next Friday, and then we've got the one that expires in what is now, as of today, 17 days to expiration. So that's where we're at on SPX. Next trade, opening trade in RUT. So we put on a double calendar in RUT. We did this with uh, with nine days in the front week, which is you know, a little bit more. We like to be kind of in that six, seven, eight day range, but I just like the risk reward here. So we went ahead and put that on. Uh, price has kind of bounced around in there, but we are still in good shape, still well within range here. Price is coming down in the Russell today. Uh, and, and so you can see we're down based on just the implied volatility movement, but still within range here. So hopefully we can ping pong around and, and book a profit in that one next week. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So we have our long put vertical that we've been holding for that short delta exposure. We're at about three to one on our ratio of short delta versus our theta when we beta weight that to SPY. So in decent shape there, we, we definitely need a down move in this market. I mean, it's just been such an extended rally. Uh, we, we need a little bit of two-sided action, but roll this out, adjusted our strikes accordingly. Price has moved up since we did that. So it's uh, just outside of our range here um, that the market's closed. So that P&L graph is a little bit off. So don't pay attention to that, but um, that's where we're at in XLK. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. Oops, what did I do here? Looks like I, oh, oh yeah, I had a correction here. That's right. So what I did, just to kind of further explain it, what I did is I accidentally rolled this to the weeklies. 
Um, I just didn't change it on the uh, on the platform, and so I sent out this correction alert. So uh, we in, we meant to roll it to the 37 days to expiration in the monthly cycle, but we accidentally rolled it to the weekly with just 23 days, and so we just went ahead and hold it, held it. We'll we'll uh, we'll roll it again here as we get closer to expiration, but there was no reason to um, roll it out again immediately. Uh, so anyway, that's that's kind of what I did there. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that's in that trade. Uh, next trade, we did a closing trade in booking and booked beak profits in booking. Uh, price ran higher, a uh, little, little chance to get back. So we're not going to hold it all the way till next Friday. Uh, we just went ahead and booked that beak profit and freed up that capital. Next trade, opening trade in Amazon. So we put on a new duck in Amazon. Uh, at that point, I had nine days to expiration. And so if we take a look at that, we took off a one of our iron ducks in Amazon today. And actually, it's come down now towards the end of the close. Could have got it at better prices had we held a little bit longer. But we could have got it at even better prices had we exited first thing in the morning. So... Uh, just part of the game, though. Don't. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody in the community this morning about, you know, what's the, what do we when we get to that expiration day? What's what should we be doing as far as exiting? And what I said, and I and and I want to reiterate here is that you know ninety percent of what we do is mechanical, right? The setup, the exits, the management, the the roles, and all that stuff. It's 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 very very mechanical. 90% of it's mechanical, but there's still about a 10% of trading that, that's got to be subjective. And, and what I mentioned here is, for example, uh, on that, on that uh, Amazon Iron Duck, let me just, actually, let me just grab it and um, put it up here so you can see what I mean. So what we had was this one on here. Here's the one we took off today. Well, you know, when we first got up, price was right here. We have a max profit of 606 on this trade, and we were up about 450 bucks. And then price ran higher. It was out here in the beak, and so uh, that, and and I exited about two o'clock today with about an hour or so to go in the day in the until the market closed. And so we we went ahead and closed that out. Booked over beak profit. You know, it's a profit that that's cool. But, you know, obviously we in hindsight you could have made more. Now, what happened is after we closed it, price moved back lower. So we could have booked, you know, 400 and some dollars on the trade. And so you don't, don't beat yourself up. There's no right or wrong answer. You don't know what's going to happen. And so just, just exit when you think the best time is. Be okay with it. And, and move on. I mean, that's all you can do. I mean, you're dealing with such a short duration, you know, when you get down to the last day that, you know, any little you know, price movement can have an effect on your P&L, either good or bad. I mean, I've had it the other way too, where, you know, price was way out here on the beak and I held it all the way up until the bell and right, literally right before the bell within the last five to 10 minutes of trading, price just shot down and I booked full max profit, you know, so it works both ways. Just don't beat yourself up if you, uh, if you get out and, you're, and then you kick in yourself because you could have done better. Uh, that's going to happen. It's going to happen quite a bit. So just have a, just kind of determine when you want to get out and just do it. And, and that's all you can do. So hopefully that's, that's helpful. Uh, the other iron duck that we have here in Amazon is this one here. You can see prices out here on the beak. This expires next Friday. And so let's, uh, let's mark our slices here. Uh, let's move this to 1221. And then let's just look at what kind of probabilities we have. If we move our price slice to the edge of the beak here, you can see we've got about a 16% probability that price could get back to the duck head. So price continues higher next week. We'll just book that, take it off, and free up that capital for other high probability trades. Next trade, opening trade in Lulu. So we did an earnings iron duck in Lulu. Uh, and this was kind of the same situation uh, as what I just talked about with Amazon. I mean, this one we had, I thought we were going to book a full beak profit, uh, but price ended up running higher in Lulu. And we got out for about 30, 35%, or almost 40% of max profit in Lulu. So could have done a little bit better there on our exit, but Again, don't don't kick yourself too much. That's just part of the game. We'll win some and we'll lose some. We'll do better on some. We'll do worse on some. That's just how it goes. 
Uh, next one, closing trade in CL. So we had another iron duck in CL, booked a beak profit on that. Price ran higher, just took that off because uh, we had a, a quite a bit of time and <clears throat> not much chance of getting back to the duck head. Next trade, closing a trade in Adobe. So we closed our, our pre-earnings long strangle in Adobe. Never really got the price movement or IV expansion that we needed in Adobe. Let's take a look at the chart, A-D-B-E. And let's go to our three month daily chart. And so what you'll see here is, you know, implied volatility from the time that we put it on, we did get a pop, but then it just kind of, uh, you know, moved sideways and then price just kind of moved sideways. And so we exited before the earnings announcement and, uh, and took a little loss on that one. I did get somebody also posting in the community, hey, you know, look at what Adobe did. Shouldn't we have held this until after the earnings? We could have we could have made money. Well, that's hindsight trading. Don't do that. That's I mean, we're never going to buy a straddle for earnings. We're just not. It's a losing game through and through. And you may have been able to book a tiny profit had you got up got out right when it was at the top point of the day, but you can't trade like that. So um, we are out of that one. Same thing in Costco. We had a pre earnings long straddle. Uh, took that off for a tiny loss. So uh, booked that or uh, closed that one out before earnings as well. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. We closed out one of our iron ducks in SPX. Uh, I already mentioned that. We booked a little bit over beak profit on that one. Uh, if we go back to SPX and take a look so we've still got that that one left uh that we're going to so so that's the one we added today um and then we closed that other one out i already already mentioned that uh next trade opening adjusting trade in zb so we added a short strangle in zb and then we are we're still holding our other adjusted strangle which is at the 161 straddle so if we take a look at zb we've got these two different pieces here Here's the straddle, got a nice move up today in our favor. And so that's helping out that piece. And then our other one that we just put on, uh, got a nice contraction in implied volatility. So already up a couple hundred bucks in that one. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. Apple just continues to be strong. We've been holding this for, for short Delta exposure. So we uh, rolled this out one, uh, rolled this out to January with 35 days and then adjusted our strikes accordingly. So if we look at Apple here, here's what that looks like now. You can see prices moved up a little bit since we put this on, but still well within range. So just looking for some downside to benefit that. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So that's the other one I, I mentioned. We did that with seven days to expiration. Uh, closing trade in Roku. So here's another one that I was hoping we might get a chance at a, uh, a duck head, but we ended up booking just a bit over beak profit. This was a this was actually a reverse iron duck, and uh, so we closed that one out um, today as well. And then I already mentioned the closing trade in the Lulu earnings and the Amazon uh, iron duck as well. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with six B. So I was trying to close this out just for a small profit today. We're down to 21 days to expiration. I mentioned on a video earlier this week, yesterday I believe, uh, that you know we're, we're at 21 days. So typically we like to roll our close once we get uh, down to that point. Uh, but we're you know we're just I, I never got filled, and so I'm just going to hold this over the weekend. If we can get a little bit of a down move, we'll book book profits. If not, we're we're just going to close it out regardless. Reason being is after the Brexit vote, implied volatility just got crushed like we thought it would. And so, I mean, see what happened today. Um, so implied volatility got crushed. And so I don't I don't really want to roll this and manage this and just and try to fight this position uh, with implied volatility as low as it is now. So we're just going to close that out early next week and either take the take the winning or the lose, take the win or the loss in 6B. Uh, next trade, whoops, next position, ES. So we've got on this long put vertical here, just uh, holding that for short delta. We'll be rolling this next week. We're down to seven days to expiration in our December trades. We still have uh, four different positions, QQQ, DIA, uh, IWM, and, and ES here. So we'll be rolling those. Uh, we'll spread those rolls out next week. So, oh, and SPY as well. Uh, we'll, we'll roll those uh, next week. Forward slash GC, we've got an iron condor in gold. 
See prices hanging out right here. We've got some profit, not quite enough to take off yet. So we will, uh, you know, if we get some more contraction in gold, we'll potentially be able to take that off next week. Nat gas, I mentioned. ZB, I mentioned. Uh, wheat, I mentioned that. Apple, Amazon, DE, John Deere. We've got our uh, long put vertical in, uh, excuse me, short call vertical in John Deere. Price is hanging out right here near the break even. So looking for some downside to benefit that. I almost rolled this closer to price earlier this week. Price was way out here, almost a 50% of max profit. I was giving it a little bit more time and that price ran up. So we're just, we're still in good shape. Just looking for some more downside to get back in. DIA, we've got these two sets of short call verticals. You can see prices out of our range, so just looking for some downside. And like I said, we will be rolling these next week. Same thing with IWM. Same thing with QQQ. So like I said, our short delta uh, position, we're about three to one on our short delta versus our theta. So pretty short. I mean, we could definitely use a down move. Uh, here's our rut double. I already talked about that. Shop, Shopify. Shopify continues its climb. It moved into the duckhead area. Uh, we're up a couple hundred bucks. We've got a max profit of 1100 bucks on this one. So this would be a real nice duckhead to take home next week. These expire next Friday. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, the one thing to keep in mind is we've got way out here, you know, past our break even before we get to our kind of exit point. So we've got a lot of room to let this one roam. Uh, hopefully it just kind of stays in this in this range and we book a nice uh, duck head profit. But that's where we're at in Shopify. SMH had a strong move earlier this week, moved out of our range. But if we look at the untested side, just the puts, you can see we still got a lot of premium in those. And so we're not looking to make another adjustment yet. Uh, and we're not going to add to this one. Applied volatility is low. It, if we If we pop back up, you know, even if it's not quite to that 50 level, but if we pop back up earlier this week, uh, early next week, we will look to potentially add to that one. SPX, I talked about. SPY, I mentioned, same story. We're going to roll that uh, early next week. And then I already mentioned XLK. So that's all the positions. We do have some dry powder. We do have some cash sitting there ready to be deployed. So we'll be looking at uh, some different options next week. Uh, some of the things that I'm looking at is Roku. Uh, let's go to a chart here, R-O-K-U. Premium continues to be decent in there, for especially for a $130 stock. I mean, the, uh, the options are, are pretty elevated. I mean, we're able to easily do ducks and reverse iron ducks in there, even though it's, it's a lower price stock. So uh, the, the monthly volatility in there is, is, is really nice. So Roku, uh, potentially add another one in Shopify. Uh, we've got that that reverse iron duck in Shopify, so we may look to do another one there. Uh, Google is another one we'll be looking at. Uh, Booking.com and CMG. So those are all kind of your uh, your the list that we're looking at for iron ducks next week. Uh, last thing I want to cover is the expected move for next week. So let's go to my weekly expected move. By the way, I'll, I'll be sending this out to members. Um, just haven't yet working out a couple little uh, quirks in it before before I give it to you all, but it's uh, it's almost ready. So um, this is the weekly. Ex this is the expected range for next week. Look how look how narrow it's getting. I mean, look because of this you know contraction in implied volatility, the the uh, price of options just really getting compressed, which affects our kind of our expected range here. So you can see. You know, it's just up to about 3,200 and down to about 3,132, 3,134 in that range. So as you can see, compared to last week, uh, which is this here, uh, this week is is gotten really tight. And that's just due to the low volatility that we're seeing. Um, you know, I mentioned last week we just we had this really narrow range and then all of a sudden, boom, it popped up. And what do you know? Right up to the expected move. And so um, we'll see what happens next week. But that is where we're at. That's where we're at. The other thing we're really watching is bonds. Um, bonds are really moving. I mean, these are these are big moves for bonds, and uh, and so we'll see what happens. Uh, the the expected range for bonds actually is more narrow uh, 
uh, next week as well, but that has to do with the implied volatility contraction. If we look at TLT, you can see we had a big contraction the last couple days. A lot of that has to do with the Fed announcement coming out and saying they're not going to do anything for 2020. It has a lot to do with the ECB and the whole UK Brexit thing uh, being over and done with. So seeing some major contraction in implied volatility across the board. I mean, look at if anyone had a trade in Netflix. I mean, this thing just got crushed today. I mean, the 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 price didn't move and implied volatility just got annihilated. So a lot of fear coming out of the market. So beware. And, uh, and so that's all I got for you. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.